Former MTV News reporter and anchor Tabitha Soren is with us on Good Day Rochester. She has a photo exhibit that's been following pro baseball players for the last 15 years. She's written a book that Jen's holding, uh, Fantasy Life, the Baseball baseball in the American Dream. Uh, maybe you grew up uh, watching her on MTV like I did and uh, <laughs> fangirling her over, you know, in college and in, in high school and college. But not a lot of people knew, and I certainly didn't know that you were an accomplished photographer as well. It's something I've been working on for a long time, but really what I'm here for today is the wine butler. <laughs> Uh, he still butler. hasn't shown up. Yeah. You and me both. He's coming. He's coming. It's five o'clock somewhere. He's your surprise. Um, but you know, all you spent how many years at MTV News? I think nine. Everyone, nine Most years. of the nineties. Yeah. And you said that you've been a photographer longer than that. That's true. Um, but I also had three children during my time building a career in the art world. So. As anybody with children knows, your mm -hmm. your trajectory gets interrupted mm -hmm. quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so I would teach at the journalism school. I live in Berkeley. I would teach at their journalism school when my child was under one and when I was nursing. That's so amazing. So that was an wow. easier thing to do. <laughs> then, you know, I just found that breaking news and jumping on planes and having my schedule be topsy turvy at all times just didn't allow me to be the mom I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had done it since I was 18 years old. Mm -hmm. My first job was at CNN as an intern mm -hmm. in New York. And I just felt like it was time for a second act. Mm -hmm. I, but most people wouldn't think of art maybe as a second act because you said it, you had to break into the world of art. And right. uh, so you. Well, what happened was I got a fellowship at Stanford and I just found my way into the art history department and really fell in love with something else mm -hmm. that maybe my middle class upbringing didn't really allow me to investigate because I was thinking of just, you know, you go to college, you get a job, and I wasn't really thinking about how can I be the most creative person possible. Mm -hmm. That said, I think that my job at MTV and photography isn't all that different. I'm trying to, in, in journalism, I was doing, what, 30 frames a second, and now I'm just doing one frame at a time. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely within my comfort zone. Baseball. Yeah, that's what part Not of that Not in my topic. comfort zone, yeah. actually. Right. Well, she <laughs> so, was a fan before. So little interest in sports. I was going to ask you about that. But I think, that? I think the role of sports in America is way more important than the game that is being played. I think it says a lot about our interest in striving and beating the odds and, and I think it connects back to this American facet and belief in manifest destiny that we all want to be number one and when you look at other cultures around the, the world um, that's not always the case and I think there's a real dark side to having your uh, future and your life wrapped around the pre precarity of self-perfection you know, you just are, wow. I mean, even when you're in the major leagues, they're in that batting cage trying to just improve it by the an infinitesimal amount mm -hmm. of skill so they get more playing time, they get higher up in the lineup. And I kind of thought once the guys got to the major leagues, there would be this sigh of relief and they would be happy where they were. But that wasn't necessarily the case. I'm sure, sure Derek Jeter is an exception to that, <laughs> but and the people on that level. Yeah. But um, for the most part, it's striving, striving, striving from single A to double A to triple A to. And I just felt like it, that doesn't relate just to athletes in this country. That relates to all of us. I mean, when I was in television news, I started at the 99th market in Burlington, Vermont, and you know Dallas was on my radar, and then after that, you know L. A. and then maybe you get to New York. I mean there. Is we're on all these tracks that I think really push us and I think maybe some of that pushing cut dampens your ability to be happy these guys what? know about pushing though uh, these 21 people That's that right. you follow they do so, yeah. uh, there's a bit of Rochester in this book that's right that's yes. High Falls and I really wanted to shoot with the water behind him and that required us taking a lot of routes that we were not allowed to do really <laughs> And the reason, yes, that reason is because it's so muddy I, and I slipped right down and was had mud from my ankle to my head. And when the shoot was done and we hiked all the way back up, uh, this is Brian Stavisky. He, his mom wouldn't let me get in the car and drive to Pittsburgh, which was my next stop, until she washed all my clothes, Aww. fed me dinner, and then by the time we were done with dinner, they were out of the dryer. It was, I was like walking around that. in a giant T-shirt. Okay, I love that. Again, and, and the, this is the fascinating thing about this book is you get to hear the stories behind these amazing photos. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and talk to you about your book, your new book. The photos are on exhibit right now at George Eastman Museum. Thank you so much. We'll be right back.